really well. So it makes it really interesting, you know. You learn a lot, so it's great. Your NHL rights belong to the Chicago Blackhawks. Are you are you using this as a stepping stone back into the NHL as, as a learning process like a lot of the youngsters are? Sure is. You know, I'd, I'd love to stay right here until the 88 and play in the 88 Olympics and then maybe join Chicago then if, you know, whatever happens. But we'll just, you know, see what happens. And, you know, I'm here and I'm glad I'm here and I'm, you know, having fun. What are the circumstances that will uh, encourage you to stay? Well, you know, it's up to Mr. King. I'm here on a 10-game trial, so, you know, I'm trying my hardest to stay here right now and, you know, trying to help the team out as much as I can. And that's my biggest goal. If I can help the team out, then I'll be happy. And, and I hope he's happy. How do you think that uh, your nine games have gone so far? <laughs> All right, I guess. <laughs> Are you obviously tonight? You scored early in the in the first period. You laid out a couple of guys in the second. It's uh, it looks like you're you're involved. Thank you. I, you know, I try. My line mates help me out a lot. We're talking out there. You know, we're just trying to do our best, like you know, just having a little fun, like I said. Continued success. Thank you, Jim. Michael State by Mike Stapleton of uh, Canada's Olympic Hockey Program, one of the young faces we hope will be around in 1988. Six fives to Lex Lee, Team Canada. Back after this. Canada led 3-1 after one, but seven goals in the second period, five to the Soviets. And the Moscow Selects lead Team Canada 6-5 after 40 minutes of play. Just two games in the Friday night NHL schedule, and the Oilers and the Jets just underway at Northland's Coliseum in Edmonton. The Jets score early in this one. Watch Dale Howarchuk take a beautiful pass just inside the line and fire one past Grant Fuhr, who is handcuffed on the play. It is 1-0, Jets leading on Dale Howarchuk's 19th goal of the season. And in the other game tonight, in Pittsburgh, Mario Lemieux has scored four times, three in the first, once in the second, as the Penguins lead the Toronto Maple Leafs 7-3 into the third period now. In skiing today, Swiss racers stole the show at the Women's World Cup downhill in Val d'Isere, France. But two Canadian skiers. But in between those, maybe I focused too hard on, on the errors I wanted to clean up for today. And I let a lot of the other part of the run go. I'm not really pleased with it. Other Canadians, Lisa Savajarvi of Bracebridge, Ontario, a disappointing 31st. Karen Stemmel, 36th. Kelly Casey, 38th. But perhaps the story of the day for Canada. Karen Percy of Banff, Alberta. She crashed at the very end of the course, but managed to get across the finish line. Ended up in ninth place. Montreal's Matthew Hilton wins again. Hilton scored a second round knockout over Willie Clayton in a scheduled 10 round fight at Madison Square Garden in New York. And in other notes, the Montreal Alouettes will name their new head coach on Monday. Back to hockey in Hamilton in just a moment. And it is the Moscow Selects leading Team Canada 6-5 after two. Just when you thought it was safe to go for a brew, the Moscow Selects come out storming in the second period and take a 6-5 lead over Team Canada. But 20 minutes of hockey still left to be played here at the Cops Coliseum. Howie Meeker's back with us with some highlights. Just when you thought Canada was out of it, they get a goal on the power play to make it close. Howard, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're talking okay. about the power play goal. Oh, all right, fine. What... <laughs> What, what, you what you have to do here in this power play goal is certainly watch uh, Gord Sherbert. Sherbert makes the super play. All right, right here on the blue line, Ken Berry. Ken Berry has the puck on, on the blue line. Let her go from there, fellas. All right, Sherbert backhands the pass to Habscheid. Now just stop it right there. Just stop it right there. The key is watch the Soviet players as they back up. Everybody's looking at Sherbert, and Berry on the blue line cuts in and then picks up the puck after Michigan makes a great save. Let it go. Sherbert makes the shot. Mishkin makes the save. And everybody is still watching the puck. Nobody turned around to pick up Ken Berry, who made a great play on the blue line to keep from going offside, and then come in through the slot and put the loose puck in the net. Don McLaren uh, scored a, his first goal of the night to uh, tie the game at five, but with less than three minutes to go in that period, Peter Malkov scored a goal. It seems the Soviets lull you into a false sense of security and then really lower the boom on you. <laughs> Well, they certainly do, and uh, here we're going to show you that uh, Melkov goal, but certainly it was Styles trying to do way too many things. The thing is, in this game of hockey in behind the blue line, there's number four Styles, and just let it go a little bit from there, and you'll see that Team Canada here playing the puck and not the man. Now, there's Styles checking one man, and he should stay with him and not try to go and do anything else. He goes into the corner and picks up Zemchenko and knocks him down. Now he runs after Melkov again. 
and lets him go. The puck comes back to Zemchenko, and there's Melkov home free. The pass out in front of the net, and the snapshot high over top of the shoulder, and bang, it's in the net. Uh, you don't run around against anybody, but you certainly do not run around against the Soviet club. The trend seemed to reverse itself in the second period after the first. It was Canada that came out uh, first in the first period and last in the first period, but the, the Soviets really turned things around. I mean, they, uh, they came back with four straight goals to take the lead and really did dominate. Well, if you don't finish the check on anybody, but particularly the Soviet club, you're going to be deep in trouble. And the second that Team Canada started letting the Soviets know that, hey, you handle the puck, you're just going to get hit or you're going to pay the price, or we're going to skate into you, just skate into you, then they, they slow up a little bit, they start looking, they start hearing the pitter-patter a little feet, and their passes aren't as sharp, their passes aren't as accurate. Team Canada has to make up for their lack of mobility. And, and, and late goes all around. I don't think so. I, I, I just think Dave King is so doggone happy with this club that they scored the number of goals that they have against this Soviet team in this contest so far. The one knock against Team Canada has been in this whole series, we can't score goals. Now they got a bucket full, and I'm quite sure they'll go out there and get some excellent scoring chances. We won't play tomorrow night in London.